Welcome to Paranormal Gumbo with your hosts, Angel and Aaron. <laughs> Hey, welcome to Paranormal Gumbo. This is Aaron. And this is Angel. Where we talk about all things paranormal and try to add a little dose of humor. A big dose of humor. There you go. I stand corrected. Oh, don't. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Never going to let that me forget that one, are you? That was some pretty good <laughs> shit. And I say um a lot, so... Um... Yeah, I cut out ums like crazy. No, don't get the gun. It's okay. Hey, you can never shoot me again after all I had to cut out on that last interview. That is true. <laughs> you can never. That is true. So. <laughs> yeah, we did it on purpose. I'm like, she's going to hate this. <laughs> Tell him that I've hired a hitman for both of y'all. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll let him know. <laughs> we're, we're contacting the the U.S. Armed Forces, the Air Force, and we're going to let them know exactly who you are. That's right. That's, That's good. right. Because you That's revealed true. so many secrets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We did a ton, and I, I knew we weren't going to do a whole lot. I, I mean, he couldn't he couldn't say what was in he there. Can't. Yeah, no, but but it still was informative, mm -hmm. and it was. I think the best part about it though wasn't really anything y'all said; just y'all meshed really well together. Mm -hmm. I was very. Yeah, I've known it. I've known him for a few I years. Jealous. I almost said his name. I've known you a whole lot more than a few years. Well, you know. <laughs> We've got different personalities. Yeah. So it's, it's like, you know, I, I called you out on the, the mermaids when we're, you were doing this. And, you, hey, you explained it perfectly. You know, that's why you were doing it. But her style is she likes to have everything, like, neat and proper and all in a row. And mine is yeah. I want talking points. Yeah. I don't need to read everything. I just... This is what well, I want. It's conditioning from having to do all the education stuff I had to do. Mm -hmm. For so many years, you have to do it that way when you do education. And so I've got to kind of get out of that. I've got to let it go a little bit and yeah. loosen up. Yeah. And so. you did loosen up whenever I called you out on the, the mermaids one. It was fantastic after after that. Yeah. Just call me out on it again. I'm, yeah. I mean, if if it happens again, let me know. Okay? She hates me because she does, like, oh, you know, research for weeks on end. And usually me, I'll research it, but I, I hardly ever write anything down. And if I do, it's like three sentences long compared to like your paragraph. Yeah. Well, and it works out better. You know, it's like I can it's loosen ingrained. up. And yeah. yeah, it's ingrained. Yeah, it's going, it's going to take a little bit. So, but Yeah, I mean, just call me out on it when you catch well, that, that's, that's it. Because I don't, it I don't well. hear it. That's the thing about it as well. I mean, we, we just started doing this. Yeah. Like, hey, let's do this without doing a, a whole lot of research on how to do it. Right. Um, the proper ways. Yeah, it's a learning curve. Yeah. That's the thing about it. So we're, we're learning. We're getting better. They need to know why we suck. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> hey, we suck. Listen to us anyway, though, because yeah. one day we're we might not better. suck. <laughs> we suck right now, but we're we getting might not better. Suck. We sucks. This is a reason we sound the way we do. Yeah. We don't sound like the professional guys. We don't have, like, professional equipment. We've got extremely good equipment thanks to... Never Ready Gamers. Yep. We've got a nice space, thanks to MacNarb Gaming. But, you know, we don't have a full studio with sound technicians and sound well, We don't have assistants who help us do yeah. the research. No. And, yeah, like you say, the sound technicians and that kind of yeah. thing. And But what we do have is a passion for the paranormal. Mm. And what we do have. Yeah, that's true. What we do have is enough knowledge about each other that we could blackmail each other at Ooh, any point. That's a bad so, thing. That's a good thing because Maybe that means you. that means we're going to keep on doing this because well, if anybody tries who, to stop. Now we know who the evil one in this group is, right? <laughs> what the shit? Everyone looks at me and they're like, oh, they can't be. Because I don't the have fat, the beard the ball, to do this. Beard, you you've know, got to be the like, evil one. He's the bad go, guy because he's always like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Exactly. You want to borrow my beard? 
No, thank you. I someone don't know keeps where trying to get been. me. Someone keeps trying to get me to cosplay uh, Ming. I think it is from uh, Flash Gordon. Oh God, yeah, like, I remember you've that. Got the, that you've got was the hokey. beard. Your eyebrows That's are all funny. you know antenna like like him. Like, you could pull it I could, off. I could be a fat Ming. You could pull it off. Oh my God, I loved that movie when I was a kid. It is so cheesy. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've seen it. A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Movie I watched. Those old TBS reruns. Crawl. You remember Crawl with the uh-uh. the boomerang star thing? I never <laughs> saw that. It was hand. It was weird. No. It was a little bit weird. I yeah. like the the Beast Master. That mm-hmm. was my favorite though. Oh, I love that show. I the love Beast that movie. Master. Yeah. The second one kind of sucked, but. No. Yeah, but the first. Well, they all sucked. Looking back amazing. at them, yeah. but as a kid, it was awesome. Well, nah, shit. Even now, I would watch the first. one. I haven't Man, seen it in me? years. So. But, are we ready to talk about paranormal news? Maybe. Not really a whole lot to talk about this week in the paranormal. No UFOs have like landed in Washington. No ghosts have come out and said, "Hey, look, we're we're real." You know, nothing like that no, so far. The government that we know still hasn't of. come forward and said, "Hey, we've been lying all these years." Yeah, mm. but. I can see UFOs becoming a uh, something that's a little bit more noticed thanks to Romanian engineers. Um, they've developed the all-directional flying object, the Adifo, Adifo, I'll just call it the all-directional flying object. The flying thingy. It looks exactly like you would think a UFO would look, and it can travel in any direction. And right now it's just a small scale, you know, it's maybe maybe six feet in diameter who but fits in it no one yet but they're talking about how cheap it is to manufacture and actually maintain and use that it could be used as a personal vehicle but nobody's been in it so with a remote control flight yeah they they fly with a remote control right now but in the future they're saying that you'll be able to fly it yourself personally from inside but doesn't a drone pretty much fly in any direction well, so what's the some drones, like the smaller ones, they can yes, but like the uh, the 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 drones with the four props, the, for them to be able to carry a human, they're going to have to have gigantic props. And these right here, yeah. actually, it looks like it uses some sort of jet propulsion. Hmm. So maybe yeah. they have their own Area Fifty One, and they they're, they're investigating. They're getting and to jump on reverse engineering UFOs. They're getting to jump yeah. on like the raid Area Fifty One people that are like, "Oh, let's mm-hmm. go ahead and raid Area Fifty One. Let's let's go ahead and maybe. do this." And they're like, "Huh?" Hey, they guys, have their own Bob Lazar. Maybe. I wonder if he runs a brothel over in Romania. Probably. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, it's Romania. Probably. It is Romania. I'm pretty sure he does. Yeah. Also in the news, um, thanks to an Israeli spacecraft, we now have tardigrades, or water bears, on the moon. Those things are so cute. Oh, my gosh, I they're mean, so cute. They okay. look like little bears. Would you hug one if it was no. six feet tall? Well, no. Exactly. No, because then it, it wouldn't probably be cute. So their cuteness comes from how small they are and how and, virtually and indestructible they the, are. The way that they look in that specific view, but if they were like six feet tall, they'd probably be like slimy. And, Why would and, they be slimy? I, I don't mean, know. What would change about Because they look slimy. They look like they would be slimy. Well, here's the thing. I mean, the spacecraft crashed into the moon earlier this year, and we're just now hearing about it in August. So here's here's my thing. Israeli tardigrades have colonized the moon. Yep. We're going to have some strange aliens yeah, uh, growing out forward, there. Flash forward. But fast are they forward. really, they wouldn't really be aliens because they were from years, here. And they're going to be freaking launching lasers at us from the moon. Maybe not that long. Yeah, what what what's, what what would you call those? They're not aliens. I mean, no. I mean, maybe the ones that are born here. on the moon after. But then maybe we're aliens. Uh, you know, there's sure the theory that we're planted here. You know, from somewhere. Yeah, I'm pretty else, sure, so. maybe. Well, that, that's one of the things that um we're going to be talking about in today's podcast is um where we're going to be bringing up Area 51 again since it's still in the news ish kind of hasn't been as big as before. Still don't know if people are going to run. The do the Naruto run into it or not, but so have you decided what you're going to do? Well, I mean, if if my friend goes, I'm going to go. Yeah, 
But you won't participate, right? Oh, hell no. You're just going to no, watch. I'm just going to go for the shit okay. show that it's going to become. And because even, I don't want to do this I, podcast by myself. I don't think when it's you get going shot. to. Hey, I may be in the crossfire back where I'm at. I don't know. But even if 80,000 people show up, I don't think there's going to be a run. I think it's just going to turn into one giant party. One big and party. It Everybody's every going to bring their that. stuff and barbecue. Yeah. Well, that's what the guy who supposedly started it, I don't know if he really did, but he claimed he started it, a college kid. Mm-hmm. And that's what he said he kind of had plans for yeah. is to have a, a year. We talked about this already, to yeah. have a yearly um, festival. So well, it would be interesting so, to see how it turns out. If they be. keep on, there's going to be parties going on all year in the desert. Tardigrades. Mm-hmm. Water bears on the moon, colonizing it right now as we speak. Because those damn things can live anywhere. They're like cockroaches. Yeah. Well, no, these things are tougher than cockroaches. Oh, that's... It's like you they're step definitely on a cockroach, cuter it's gonna than die. cockroaches. I will tell yeah, you, if well, we had like a six-foot tardigrade and a six-foot cockroach, I'd hug that tardigrade all day long. Well, yeah. <laughs> I hate cockroaches cockroaches. Look creepy as shit, man. Oh, my gosh. They're disgusting. Yeah, I hate them. I hate them. But, I mean... If there was a six foot tardigrade, maybe it would just rule the world. Maybe. Because how would you kill the damn thing? You wouldn't. You can survive in the vacuum of space, high temperatures, low temperatures, and basically just dehydrates and we're going to become a little a bit of water. Race yeah, for much, the tardigrades. Man. It'd be kind of interesting. We'll I mean, be what would we doing be doing? Their for bidding. It? What would, would we do for it? What will we do to get rid of them? No, for it. Like, let's say it Build comes out. Build things that it likes. I don't know. Ah, we're going to have to do some research. What do slaves ever what do? To, whatever. We're going to have to do some research and figure out what water bears like. Water? And bears. Mm-hmm. Pretty Boom, much solved it. it. There you go. We got it. We'll just give them a bunch of polar bears. Polar bears like water. Polar bears are going to be extinct by then, unfortunately. We're all going to be extinct by 500 bears. million years from now. Probably going to be extinct in a hundred years from well, now. The way we're if going. you believe some politicians, and this is all I'm going to say about it, we're going to be dead in ten years. So that's ten all I'm going to say about it. We're not going to discuss politics. I don't like doing that. Ten. I've years. got my views. You got your views. So. Yeah, my my view is pretty much you suck and you're wrong all the time. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. The sky's yeah. blue, Angel. That is the role of an older cousin. Mm-hmm. The sky is blue. The sky only looks blue. It is not blue. It is clear. It looks blue because of the reflection of light See on the water droplets. People. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. Got to put up with this shit all the time. But do you have anything for uh, for paranormal news today? Not a lot. The only thing that I can really think of is that there's actually a planet that's similar to Earth that they've discovered. This planet's actually 31 light years from our solar Only system. Only 31 light years. Only 31 light if years. If you travel the speed of light, it would take you 31 years to get there. And with the way that time works, you traveling at the speed of light, you're actually aging slower well, you know, than people on Earth. There's so speculation years that you there, can find a wormhole. 31 years to get so. back. That's 62 years total. So if you were to leave today, you would come back 500 years in the future, at least, probably more. Unless you find a wormhole. You have to stop and think there's other ways to travel that we don't know about. So, <sighs> Plus, there's the whole Star Trek thing. What do you call it? The Star Trek thing that takes them apart and puts them back together. The teleporter? Yeah, the teleporter. You couldn't think there, of teleporter? No. I'm telling you, four years Jeez, from now, you're man. in trouble. The genes, they I suck. I'm totally screwed, man. <laughs> Damn. Anyways, this this um this planet is in what's called the GJ three fifty seven system. It has it actually has three planets, and they circle around a sun, pretty much like ours. Now the mm-hmm. sun is smaller than ours, and the one planet is larger than Earth. I think they said six times larger than Earth, but it seems to have the conditions. Um, the the ratios and, and proportions and the conditions that uh, it may have a system pretty much like ours. Now, the other two, they don't think can support life. Mm-hmm. But that one, it's I a possibility. Mean, if, if they're close enough to each other, one can support life, one can't, or two can't. You can actually colonize the 
the one that can support life and use the other two for resources if they're close maybe enough. so maybe so so that's that's promising more information to come about that but uh well, that, I mean, how's that promising for us we can't get to it within our lifetime because you never know they might find wormholes you know or something like that that'll get us there you just don't know what's going to happen i mean well, what the are things, they researching right now that we have no idea bob lazier Bob Lazar. Lazar, 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 Laser. He what says about that, Bob? Yeah, I love that movie. That's a good one. He's uh, he talks about how there is a gravity wave machine that can actually um, do pretty much that. It's don't know if it's the exact same way as in Event Horizon where they fold space, but you know maybe I'll have to look into it a little bit. Well, let's look at it this way. We have UFOs that are seen here, even by our governments, they've already admitted, yes, Mm -hmm. we're watching these UFOs. We have people who we know were probably abducted by said UFOs. Mm -hmm. You know, we we talked in depth to um, Calvin Parker, Parker, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he was abducted by aliens or something. So... They had to get here somehow, well, so here, okay, there's maybe, obviously some way that they travel that we don't know about. Maybe they are not traveling faster than light. Maybe they're not bending space and time. Maybe they're they're not using gravity waves. Maybe they've just got a giant mothership out there somewhere, and it took them years and 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 years, and years, and years, and years to get here. All right. right. So who knows what's going to happen with that? Uh, Hopefully they'll have some more information pretty soon. They're actually planning on they've got a couple of telescopes that they're working on that are going to be able to actually they'll they'll send them out in space and they'll Mm -hmm. be able to see closer to the planets and and investigate the terrain. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That'd be kind of interesting. Now we'll have to... We won't be able to to see them with our life. I mean, even if we're looking at them right now with a telescope, we're still seeing basically 31 light years in the past. What happened before, yeah. That's true. And we forget about that sometimes, but that is true. That is true. So Now, wouldn't it be fantastic mm -hmm. if... Like they 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 get this extremely powerful telescope and they point it directly at this planet, and they're they're like, oh my God, there's something down there, and it's like a dude holding up a, th- a sign that says "few." <laughs> huh? Now where did that come from? I'm just saying that would be funny. <laughs> would don't you think it would be funny? Uh, it's like uh, our first I contact, guess. our first official contact with aliens. You know, is on this other planet, 31 light years from here. And it's him holding up a sign telling us to screw off. You know what I think would be funnier? If we had our first contact with alien life that we all know about would be instead of somebody just standing there with a sign is like their hicks, their mm. dumb hicks. You know, <laughs> can you imagine these How y'all alien doing? Hicks? <laughs> What y'all doing over here? Yeah. Um, there's some dang old imagine? stuff over there. And, <laughs> And, you know, we just thought that was how the aliens what were. What would be scary to me is if they're not hicks, but like Cajuns, they eat everything and they see humans, they're like, what that is that? That is scary. And they're like talking in their alien language, like, what is that? I don't know, but go make some rice. Go, yeah, go, let's go That's the put old it Cajun in a gumbo. Joke, by the way. Um, it ain't far off from the truth. Pretty much. If it, no. If it moves in Louisiana... You eat it. I've eaten it, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to talk about anything else, or was that it for paranormal I think that's it for paranormal news, news right now. Okay. It's like I said, it wasn't really a whole lot of stuff. Since you're here, actually, in the studio with me this week, Aaron, yeah, and, I'm and you're not, not driving towards driving. Area 41. And what was the deal with that baby? Yeah. Why could y'all Wouldn't not shut, shut that up? baby Wouldn't... up? Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't any child in our car that was in the car next to us. Oh, my God. That's yeah. a set of lungs. Yeah. We were trying to, you know, speed up. They would speed up. We would slow down. They would slow down. It was a damn to sing. That's harassment. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. It, it was kind of weird Either because the baby or... kept, like, flipping us off. <laughs> like like the uh, like Stewie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was a damn to sing. I mean, like I said, the kid would look over, six months old, whole life, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, whole life in front of him crying its ears crying its lungs out and it would just flip us off that little bastard how dare he i know did you flip him off back what no you're not gonna flip off a little baby who's gonna flip off a little baby i would if he flips me off 
If he's crying like that. Come on, little baby, don't even know what he's flipping. doing. Oh, please. That's a little Stewie oh, baby. Oh, God. That's a little Stewie baby. So, Stewie babies know what they're doing. So you're going to flip off babies. I'm evil. What the hell? Evil. Evil. <laughs> man, oh, man. I need help, so, guys. So... I need help. You actually, you had kind of fun talking uh, to this guy. Y'all knew grip each centers? other. Yes, you knew yeah, each we're, other. We're going to call him Grip Center. So just just to give our listeners a little taste of what Angel had to go through, um, I've known Grip Centers for several years now, and when I asked him to do the interview, he was on board with it. And the actual day of the interview, we came up with a, a plan to just annoy the shit out of Angel. It worked. So, like, every 10 seconds, we would start cursing. Just wasn't just one word either, like, where we just say shit. Editing was so much fun. Yeah. It, it was. It, it was, was bad. It was I had pretty fun much with every it. other word. I'm like, oh, cut that out, cut that out. <laughs> There's jokes that you guys could have heard, but no, because, you know, they. Yeah. They, uh, maybe maybe we'll too. put the unedited version up at some maybe point. Maybe so. Maybe I mean, you so. know, don't hold it against us. You know, we were just shooting the shit, having fun. And trying to irritate me. Irritate the shit out of Angel. That's what we were trying to do. I'm and the one who always edi- edits the show, so. <laughs> I think it worked. It was, it was, uh, it extended the process for mm, just a quite little a few bit. hours. Just a little bit. Didn't hurt me any. No, not Don't at all. Quit hitting me, Angel. And then he wonders why I threaten him and she and doesn't stuff. Quit hitting me, Angel. Yeah, okay, Aaron. I'm oh over on the opposite side of the table. She's got really long arms. Yeah, I'm like Stretch Armstrong before. Yeah, pretty much. Like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what you are. All right. So, anyways, you had you had some fun with this interview, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I, I was I knew that we weren't going to have major major uncoverings and yeah, yeah, yeah. that he kind of thing he can't go into he too much go detail into, but i did appreciate that he did tell us a little bit about you know some of the things that we might not have necessarily known and it was cool that he gave us kind of his thoughts on what's you know what's out there and it's it's just kind of interesting well yeah i mean i mean who are you going to go to first i mean who's going to be in charge of actual alien beings documenting them making sure they're going to the right places, making sure they're flying in the right places. Who's going to be in charge of that if not the Air Force? You would think the Air Force, but then we have the situation when Calvin Parker and Charles Hickson went to the Air Force. They completely ignored them. Well, that was in 1973 as well, so I'm pretty sure things have changed since then. Things go back and forth, it seems like, with this whole thing. You know, they start a program, they stop a program. This branch... Project Blue Book. Yeah, this branch over here is over this program, then no, this branch over here is really... It's it's very... I don't know, it's very messy. Mm -hmm. It's it's sloppy. It's not. It's not very well organized. Almost like they're purposely making it sloppy so we don't catch things, catch on to things. Yeah, maybe makes you wonder. Mm. Maybe. So, anything else you want to say about this interview? I mean, we don't really talk a whole lot about you know what what he's seen. Um, We talk about what we think is in Area Fifty One, Wright Patterson Air Force Base. We talk a little bit about Project Blue Book. And then towards the end of the interview, we we talk about what these people should be wearing. You know, Mm -hmm. some of the the exercise routines that you should be doing because I'm a fat dude. If I was going to be running in the Area 51 Naruto run, I wouldn't just show up on September 19th in the shape I am now. I would actually get out and do some things. And we, we talk about this a little bit. Yeah. So listen up. If you are planning on running, listen to our advice on what you should and shouldn't do. Um, this is very important. Um, and whenever you go, you know, let us know about your experience. Let us know what uh, what happened. Take if, some pictures. If for I can't us. make it, yeah. Here's We'd love the thing. to have your pictures. Don't take shit. Don't take anything. Well, don't. I don't mean in the like. I mean like oh, on no, your I'm, trip. I want to be like, yeah, take some pictures inside. No. Take, don't take anything from the facility itself. No, but, nothing like that. But I mean, on your trip, on your way, you know. Yeah. Don't don't take any pictures either. I don't know if it's treasonous for me to <laughs> tell them to take pictures or not. It may be. There's but, no telling. So. I don't know, but anyways, it is. It's a funny interview, if nothing else, yeah. and you know, it's kind of cool. Some of the things that y'all talk about. 
here's part two of Area 51 with uh, Air Force, you know, Brigadier General Grip Sinners. And that's a title I made up. Also, by the way, I want to apologize. Uh, the I, I knew it. I was making a joke. Um, I didn't get to elaborate on the joke. But I know that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is not in Columbus. It's in Cleveland. But the thing about the Naruto Area 51 run is they're going to meet somewhere and then bus in to Area 51, which is, I think, they said 90 miles away. So there's going to be like a mi- uh, an hour and a half drive, at least, uh, maybe two hours drive, to get to Area 51. So that was going to be my joke. Mm-hmm. That was going to be my joke. We could meet in Columbus. Aaron listened to and it afterwards and, and realized he screwed up. He's just trying to cover for it. That's a lie. Nah. But here's, we uh, know the truth. here's part two of Area 51 with Grip Sinners. Admiral. Anything, any other titles you want to add? <laughs> Maybe Ace Air Force Pilot. You could do like on Game of Thrones, Breaker of Chains and yeah. uh, Mother of Ch- <laughs> Go down of the secrets. list. <laughs> Giver of Secrets. You know. Yes. I'd like to know what their plan would be if Godzilla yeah. just pops up. I mean, we wouldn't nuke him because that clearly wouldn't work. He'd just make him stronger. No, he'd just be like new Hulk kind of thing. It's not Mm going to work. That would be interesting. I'm I'm curious to know what we have in store for people like Godzilla or like the zombie apocalypse. But, you know, I'm pretty sure one of the big reasons that we did stop, you know, investigating into paranormal activity is because... You know, we did find something, obviously, but because we also have now a plan on how to battle against such forces. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I would be very interested. I don't know, what, what do you think as a whole? I don't know how much you know about military operations and, you know, our war college and things, but like, what would really you think? Lot. I don't really have any good ideas on what we would do. I know we, as of recently, I know our uh, Lord Glorious uh, R- Supreme Leader uh, Trump has uh, initiated the Space Force. Space Force. So, just think of that for a minute. The yeah. United well, States Air would, Force yeah. is why now would he, that. Why would he want to do a Space Force if there wasn't something out there? Right? I mean, I know we have the more real-life-to-us scenarios of, you know, we got to have global communications and technology and develop our cross-military... Uh, and I may be wrong stuff, here, but, but wasn't one of, the, one of the platforms he was running on was transparency on, like, alien life and shit like that? Once he got in, he would let us know, and then maybe. he gets in, and he's like, I can't tell people this. Well, I mean, this is some crazy shit. Let's, let's tell them without <laughs> actually telling them. Yeah. So maybe he's the one that started the maybe he's an can't stop too. us all. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. You never know. Or it could just be all a conspiracy theory that the government should try to kill 1.5 million people. Maybe. We're getting a little bit crowded over here. Uh, you just know. leave Keanu Reeves and that man's a saint. He, he's only really become a proper saint within this last year or so, I will admit. <laughs> Ever since the he's, new... He's always been a really good guy. I mean, oh, if no, you he's read some fantastic. of his... We love him to bits. His history, but yeah. He's only really been like... Keanu Reeves mm-hmm. within the past uh, he's though. been Keanu Reeves since Bill and Ted's Exit Adventure maybe this is like our way of of telling the government hey we're Just ready to know what's happening introducing the concept yeah. so that we're, we're ready for it Not, yeah. maybe we should go over equipment to bring with you there you go so we can do this, this is actually a fan. so advice from people who know some things like I mean I've done you know quite a bit of camping and we've mm-hmm. I've been in some environments where I was less than comfortable let's just yep, say yep. I'm pretty sure you've had similar situations yes, happen yes, so I have. let's start with just clothes in general yes. it's going to be cold at one o'clock in the morning in the oh, middle absolutely. of the desert it, it doesn't matter if it's the end of the summer if it's the middle of the desert it can be chilly now I will say this some deserts mm-hmm. Their con- your concept of chili is going to change because mm-hmm. when I was in Kuwait, we got up to 130, 135, 136 on average. At night, you day. got up to like 70. At night, I thought it was a bit chilly. It was 103. Oh, nice, nice, nice. But yeah, yeah no, deserts around here, probably a little bit chillier, probably down in the 50s. So mm-hmm. definitely bring a hoodie. Yeah, yeah, or a Something light, you can a light throw windbreaker. Off yeah, whenever it definitely want to be hot. able to remove it because your adrenaline's going to be pumping. You're mm-hmm. not going to want to have to have all this extra stuff flapping about in the wind. Don't wrap it around your way. It's just leave it in the back, and you'll get it later. Yeah, light so, clothing mm-hmm. in layers, relatively. Yeah, yeah. 
Not too much, but yeah, definitely. Because if you start to put too many layers on, then you start to get tight and constrict, yeah. and it's a bit awkward. But no, you're right. Maybe like some Under Armour, some Long Johns or some mm-hmm. shit like that. Like throw that on, and then you could throw a t-shirt and jeans yeah, on top there of you that. Know. that. That That would be perfect. Uh, I would Sunglasses. Probably do want sunglasses, or at least the type of glasses where you can like put clip-on lenses mm-hmm. on. Maybe that'll help. Um, because I know they're, they're planning on, what, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the it's morning? It's going to be late at night, probably. Well, they may show up late at night. Mm-hmm. They may not actually start the raid until later in the day, Daybreak, which would be yeah. pretty hilarious So you're going to gonna want sunglasses on it. Even if you go at night, they're going to have bright lights on you. Probably. Yeah. So you don't want that glare in your eyes. Yeah. If you don't wear glasses, definitely sunglasses will help because you can just take them off and toss mm-hmm. them later. And you'll be all cool action style and just like yeah. throw them to the side and watch them explode as yeah cool guys don't look at explosions unless they're their own glasses and then you're gonna want to look then you're gonna want to look because it's like oh shit that was awesome that was badass man did you see that shit no i wasn't looking it's like, cool what? guy you're, you're so cool so uh, we so got sunglasses, sunglasses light sunglasses. clothing that you can you can take off relatively quickly i would say you're definitely gonna want to have with the clothing you definitely want to cover all parts of your body because even if you don't you know get cold i mean i'm from chicago so i don't really get cold so much and I'm but, fat, so i don't get cold but you're gonna want to protect yourself against you know things like bugs and mm-hmm. the environment and there's probably gonna be you know a lot of bushes out there they can probably scratch you up and you don't want to have something that's too baggy because that stuff can get caught yes. but you definitely want to be covered so like a long sleeve shirt like maybe a tighter shirt like get a size smaller than you probably would expect get a tight shirt and like have that <clears throat> just to help cover even if you do do it during it during the day you want to have something to protect against mm-hmm. the sun to exactly bring sunblock speaking man. of that sunblock i'm going to pull a, a quote from peter from deadpool 2 Ooh. the u.s government may be bad but i'm pretty sure they're not as bad as melanoma no that's a uh, skin cancer is no joke yeah, start prepping now, get out, jog to the end of the block. There you go. Yeah, no, get your uh, get your stamina up because even if you do somehow make it across the what part desert that there is, that seabed, I don't fucking know what it is, but mm-hmm. you're going to get to the military base. Hey, guess what? These guys have been standing there waiting for you. They've been training. They They've like they know training. they know how to run with thirty gear, uh, thirty pounds of gear on their yes. back and around their body. Like they will outpace you any day yeah. of the week these that's, guys are that's just prepped. what they do and you're gonna need to be able to out chase them so mm-hmm. yeah get out there do some sprints do some hill work yes um you know yeah. hey p- pick up like you know some books or something pick up some books or something and uh strap them in your backpack and run around with that on you're gonna yeah. lose a little bit of weight but you Absolutely. want to be used to running with that weight so when you don't have it you're like the freaking wind you're really like naruto or naruto yeah, you will you will I, I will say this if you do run with weights or like even go on a long ruck march or something like that, the moment you take that shit off i tell you it's mm. a world change it's fantastic isn't it it's like you really do like just feel reinvigorated and energized and you're just like let's go to do this and you just want to go Speaking of running, mm. do not, please, God, do not run with your arms behind you. You're going to hit a small hill. You're going to hit an ant bed, a shrub, and you're going to face plant. The words end over end will come up yes. in, in your obituary. Look, we, we, I'm not condoning this act at all, but if you guys are going to do this, you need to do it right. Okay? Don't run stupid these are nerds telling other nerds that hey that's dumb yeah that's exactly just because you exactly. see in the comic book doesn't mean it's real granted there's a lot of things that we see in comic books on news that we think it's real but anyway mm-hmm. that's off topic so um, we've we've yeah. got the clothing we've got the, the eyewear we've got skincare down so we did talk about running let's kind of go over baby footwear possibilities mm-hmm. now i will say this is going to be the desert there's going to be things such as you know snakes and wild critters and bugs and sharp rocks and things i Scorpions, don't tarantulas yeah whole bunch of stuff which uh another side tangent so the death stalker scorpion Mm -hmm. is a real thing scary yeah and so now scorpions as a whole the smaller they are and i think they actually did the smaller the claws it's not necessarily the the fact that they are smaller like Mm -hmm. a death stalker scorpion you can imagine it's about the size of a penny yeah but it can kill you in two hours so here's the thing with that um, if it does happen at night, bring a UV light because scorpions will glow under a UV light. Yeah. So, or at least the ones that you need to worry about. Black yeah. ones. I mean, you don't give a shit about the the bit really big, thick black ones. You don't give no, a fuck. I mean, no. yeah, they're scary and they're scorpion. You don't want them to touch you any because we're nerds. We don't like that kind of thing. No, no. But you touch me, mom. Yeah, you won't see the one 
that's uh, really coming out to get you. And if you do take off your shoes at some point, please make sure to shake out your boots or your shoes before you put them back on, because they do scorpion spiders. They do generally like the uh, the warm mm-hmm. door. It's like a cave thing. for them. It really is. It's a nice little hidey hole for them. So yeah, mm-hmm. shake out your boots and shit, because you can even find mice in there. If so what kind of people. boots should they have? I would say there are quite a few in the market. Obviously, there's a lot out there. Um, you don't have to get something that covers, you know, your entire leg. I know there are some people that, you know, work in injuries. I am going to say go over leg, the ankle, though. A little bit. Yeah, definitely want some ankle protection because you hit a rock and all of a sudden your ankle rolls. If you yes. don't have a little bit more of stability in the ankle, you are going to have some situations that you won't want to run into. Yeah. And we want as many people to be safe, safe and come back in the same shape they were in. We don't want to have people with too yeah. many missing limbs. Yeah, we, we don't want any injuries. How about that? Yeah. We're just storming a heavily fortified military installation, but we don't want any injuries. Nothing guys. major, just, um, you know. But yeah, there's a lot of lightweight options out there. If you find something that's like considered lightweight, mm-hmm. that would actually be really good. Because even my boots that I have for when I, you know, put my uniform on to go to work, they're, they, I, I, don't really notice them as much and Mm -hmm. i feel very comfortable being able to run in them and they're even boots designed to go and run in yeah actual long distances yeah um running at high rates of speed the united states military kind of has its own niche of hey we have a need for this type of shoe Mm -hmm. swing by some websites and see like hey you're like an outfitter you know and be like hey what's 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 all this stuff and you know go check it out now, now, personally, we'll I'm going to say get steel toes because I love steel toed boots. Get yeah. composite, though. Don't get the actual steel toe. Get something composite. Because mm, the steel may uh, end up crushing you later on or mm-hmm. cutting your toes. Yeah, there is some danger in that, possibly. Mm-hmm. Especially if you have like a Hummer run up on you and all exactly, of a sudden runs yeah. over your foot and you're like, well, fuck, that hurt. Yeah. I can mm-hmm. see that. Got some steel toes on. You're like, okay, it's not as bad. Not too bad. I just lost my half my foot, but it's yeah. fine. The I'm, other getting, I'm okay. getting shot at, but my foot's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, shoes are good, yeah. Definitely get some good sturdy boots. Get some good socks. Oh, yeah, no, fantastic. Get some good socks. And you're going to want to get this stuff as soon as possible. You don't want to start using your boots the day before. Yeah, you want to break these boots. Yes. That's most assuredly we probably Because I'm going to tell that. you this right now. When I first started working where I work now, mm. I got a pair of steel-toed boots to replace ones that I had that were broken in. The first day I wore them, I had blisters this big oh, on absolutely. the back of my heels. Yeah. yeah, You don't want that shit to happen the mm. day before you're planning this gigantic run. You go, you show up <laughs> with a new pair of shoes, and you're like, dude, what are you doing? Like, yeah. Why are they? And even that, if you get something new, sometimes you have some parts of the shoe that are more reflective. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Reflection can be seen. Yep. If you're trying to be, you know, stealthy and in the dark, cover that shit up. You know what? That I've I, we have reflective belts in the military, and I tell you, dark middle of the night, I in my car driving, all of a sudden I turn the cord and I see just a sea of reflective belt. Mm-hmm. I didn't see the people whatsoever. Yeah, but, but you I see the, the reflective you see the reflection material perfectly. So now you will, it will be blatantly obvious, it's not necessarily from your standpoint, from but from theirs, mm-hmm. they will see it. The yeah. Air Force will see it, and they'll know. So yeah, cover that's that shit up, thing. dirty yeah. it up, scratch it, just get it mm. not perfect. Scuff the shit out of it. Black Throw magic it. marker. Yeah, just like go out to the, your backyard and just rub it in the grass mm. for like an hour or two. See, what I like there. to do with, with stuff like that, even like particularly hunting and stuff like that, mm. you don't want smells, right. bury it. Bury yeah, it for no, a day yeah, or two. Absolutely. Cover it in dirt and just yeah. leave it there. Do the AK testing type thing and just leave it in the ground mm-hmm. for a week and a half and see what happens. Exactly. Get all the mold off and then you're good. You're ready to go. Shit, leave the mold on. It's covering. Or on. Yeah, no, do your thing. Yeah. There you go. It's camouflage. Mm-hmm. So that's good prep tool number one uh, or number shoes. I don't know. Number shoes. Or, or number shoes. <laughs> I love uh, okay, it. I love so it. pants. Well, we can go pants mm-hmm. now. Blue jeans, while they are good and they are definitely uh, resistant, uh, you probably want to look at what type of blue jeans maybe because mm-hmm. not all are created perfectly equal. Um, you know, get some black or dark green khakis. Now, some you don't green. want these to be very tight because you may have to jump over things. And I've, right. I've found personally that when my pants are very tight, when you try to jump over something, it's not a good time. Speaking of underwear... Probably another good thing. Don't go commando. Yeah, don't do that because uh, snakes. Yes, they they do find their way up in certain places, mm-hmm. and they mm-hmm. do like the dark and dank places as well. And that's what your crotch area is for. Yep. So yeah, definitely wear some good. I would say uh, I would say briefs. Those are good. They're comfortable enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a boxers guy myself, but yeah, briefs are pretty good. I would say one good thing about briefs, or even like I guess why they tight is do. Obviously, they're more uh, forming mm-hmm. to your body, and thing that you're probably gonna want to need. 
is uh, some serious baby powder or yes. sports powder because you know what yes. you're going to be swampy down there um swamp ass is called you, swamp ass for a reason you, yeah get yourself some baby powder and get it in there the box uh, the briefs will probably a little bit uh, better to hold all that stuff in rather than the the boxes they'll probably mm-hmm. kind of just fall through and you're like well that was useless well the, the good thing about the the boxers is you've got a little bit more airflow you do get a lot of airflow yeah no, you're so. right but that's that's, that's kind of a there. personal thing up to you. The real point is, hey, wear something and you know get some some baby powder to help protect against the mugginess mm-hmm. that's going on. Yeah, because it is going to happen. Oh, actually, we were never really assumed how many ladies are going to be there. Oh yes, yes, ladies. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah. So sports bra. We don't really don't have the female with us, but we're going to go ahead and <laughs> assume sports bras or something that because uh, you're going to be running. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the more uh, let's say gifted ladies are going to have a little bit more problems with that. So obviously, keep that in mind. You're going to probably run long distance with. If you do have long hair, keep it up. This goes for yeah, men definitely and ponytail. women as well. Ponytails are good because pigtails. Like once mm-hmm. you you don't get a braid or something, you can grab hold of that and just yeah. like rip your head off. Yep. Even even we've given that advice in wrestling. Actually, now I think about it, like never. You don't really want hair at all. Like a mm. beard, head hair, none of that. You don't yeah, want it because it grabs. That's something it. that's easily gripped. I mean, if mm. he were to grab my beard right now, I'm going to go wherever he wants. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I only got one place to put you. Yeah, my little granddaughter. She'll. Uh, she's nine months old. She'll grab my beard. And I'm like, okay, what are you doing? What I was are you like, doing? Where are we going now? Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. I didn't know we were buying ice cream, but here we go. Yep. 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 I'm That's eight feet stuff. tall, but I can't fit in the little kitty thing at McDonald's. Yeah, but we're gonna much. get. We're going there now. I'm gonna try to. Yeah. I'm gonna try. Yeah, um, definitely. Put I'm gonna. I'm gonna it. suggest a hat. Get a good hat. Hats will be good. Um, Up to a point the, during the day. I guess the question is: is what kind of hat? Because there is a mm-hmm. rather large selection out there. So you got the you know the boonie hats, which are kind of built all the way across, which we generally do wear for very good sun protection. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, they do have excellent sun protection. They, the boonie hats are good, and you have the little strap that. I personally, we don't recommend actually have the strap around your head or your neck at any point in time. Don't wear the boonie hat like. You know, like they do in you know, Jurassic Park where it's just kind of like hanging mm-hmm. down your back and you have it around your neck. Because yeah, guess no. what? Somebody can take that. It's a strangulation risk right there. Know, absolutely. Yeah. Put, like, take the strap off, to be yes. quite honest. Just take yes. it off. If or, you like, lose your hat, t- it's gone. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry it's about your It's better hat. than getting strangled with the, with the yeah. cord. I mean, you can get caught by a tree and all of a sudden you've just ripped open juggler because mm-hmm. you're stupid. You, know, you don't want to do that. Yep. Um, moving on to baseball caps. If you wear a baseball, baseball cap, good. do not put the bill in the back. There's no point. Yes. I mean, yes, we talked about wearing sunglasses, which kind of will help mitigate a lot of that. But a baseball cap does kind of provide, or even any hat mm-hmm. like that has a bill, will provide that extra level of protection as far as sun and bugs and you know dirt and shit and debris getting yeah. into your eyes. And that's kind of the point. So I want to I want to call this one right now, guys. No fedoras, please. <laughs> It's no fedoras. gonna happen. Uh, you like know, said, you know, somebody upgrade gonna bring a from the fedora and the top hat to the boonie if you really want yeah, that bill. Like those, that's a better look. Look like, you know what? I will say this right now. Would you rather look like a fashionable geek and get ripped to shreds, or would you rather look like you know what you're doing? And exactly. This endeavor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. we're gonna get a bunch of mall ninjas out there that are gonna come out with like, oh man, look at my knives. You, you know can what? leave that shit at yeah, the house. You don't, you don't need a weapon that can be used against you. Even even that, even if you know how to use the weapon, do not. Yeah, and I'm stressing this. Don't bring do a gun. Not, don't bring a gun. Don't bring a knife. Yes. Do not bring it onto a military installation because it, now you've just got another felony. Yes. Now, there, and this is, these are federal installations. So federal installations you cannot bring firearms onto. Mm-hmm. Like, that is automatically you're going to jail <clears throat> into federal prison. Like, it's not going to yeah. go down for you. Like, that's... Forget the fact that you're storming Area 51 with, like, a bunch of other troops. You're going to jail for yeah. that. Leave that shit out of the house. And no. for the love of God, we're getting a little bit off clothing right now. For the love of God, if you are surrounded or even if you are held at gunpoint, stop. Yeah, if they tell you stop, you stop. Yes. Because you will get shot otherwise. They're not going to. Yes. They've come out and said we are willing to defend America's forces and, you know, mm-hmm. all of its stuff. And. Yeah, it's a training and testing facility, so they're going to protect it as best as possible. I mean, they're not going to try to kill you. That's not the point. They're not going to go out to kill you. That's 
Look, that's you get shot in the friggin' knee, you're not going to go anywhere. And guess who's no, going to be footing the bill for that? They're not going to shoot you. In the, they're going to shoot you where they can hit you, which is in the chest or mm-hmm. your mass. They're, they're going to be shooting mass. center mass. But if they're going for non-lethal, though, I'm pretty sure they'll probably aim if lower. If they're going for non-lethal, they won't use bullets. Yeah. They'll use. That's when the tasers come out. The that's rubber when bullets. The, the tasers come out. The rubber bullets. The you know the the wire. The mm-hmm. the barricades. The heat cannon. Things of it. Well, you know. Yeah. The the sonic cannon. The yeet cannon. The yeet Wait. cannon. <laughs> Can't use it. They may just throw them at people. Who knows? Just, yeah. They'll just use rocks and bricks and things. Just and, start throwing them. Yeah. And speaking of, uh, you leaving your, if you do you know, decide to, hey, take a rock and throw it at a guard, guess what? He is, at that point, you've just attacked and tried to destroy government property, and yeah. you're done at that point. You're dead. Just, yeah, let, let's keep it as peaceful as possible, people. Yeah. That's so. not, The point is not to have everybody die, which we... I mean, if the United States really needed that to happen, we could probably light up the entire... Before you even take off running, you're already dead. It'd it'd be like that scene in uh, Game of Thrones. Have you seen uh, Game of Thrones? Yes. When the Dothraki go after the the undead, the the night army? All the lights just go out. Yeah, and all the lights go out. That's exactly what that shit would look like you, if they see, wanted here's the thing, to. Though, we would, you wouldn't have been able to start. Like yeah. You would be at the meeting place be like, all right, everybody, like, poof, you're dead. Yeah. Like we would just, you'd have been oh, exploded yeah. by now. It's like some dude just so happened to be in the room. They're like, hey, you want to kill all these people? Hey, you yeah. want to launch the missile to blow up right over there? I, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Boop. Yeah. And yeah, no, some, some naval warship is going to launch it. Mm-hmm. ICBM, which I've been near an ICBM when it exploded, which is why my right ear is more deaf than my left ear. But anyway, so yeah, don't bring weapons, don't attack, and yeah, yeah. if they say to do something, do it. Just like, you know, a regular cop. If you get pulled mm-hmm. over by a cop and say, hey, license or registration, you're not going to go yeet, and then try to drive away. Yeah, That's not going to be the thing you're going to want to do. Don't, gonna, here's the biggest thing from this. Don't be an idiot. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Don't. You guys are nerds. You're supposed to be the smart ones. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, okay, so continuing on clothing. So we got clothing, I think, mm-hmm. good and covered. Uh, I would say bring gloves, actually. Because mm-hmm. if you do that. fall, like say, or you know, you just touch something, you're going to want to have some sort of hand protection. And gloves I would say and knee pads. Gloves, yeah, gloves. Uh, knee pads can be a bit tricky because a lot of people be, but... will, uh, I would say probably padded knees. Uh, yeah. Padded, no, padded go, uh, padding in the, in, the, in the pants would be better than I'd probably say area. proper knee pads or, yeah. Um, or even, you know, the volleyball knee pads. Those are nice. Yeah. What are those? Those are cool. Because yeah. those are usually soft and padded versus yeah. like the hard plated knee You know, pads. we've got a lot of sporting goods. Stores mm. are going to love us. You know, I wouldn't even bring my phone with me. I mean, you, you can, it's a federal crime to take a picture of that place, I'm sure, or oh, yeah. uh, inside. You, yeah, I would say you probably could leave the phone at home if, or at least in like the car or something. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, I mean, if you have your phone on hand, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But you'll just, you probably don't want to, you know, get distracted by it or something like yeah. that. And, yeah, no, uh, I'd recommend no selfies yeah. of what's going on. Because, hey, guess what? Every time you take a picture of yourself at a certain location doing something, that's just more evidence against yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. I'd not only that, but you that. want to pay attention to your surroundings. You're not just Absolutely. looking at your phone. You know, Look you around listen. you. What's happening? I would, ooh, that's actually, I thought of a good idea. Establish who is in charge there of the event. Who's the event leader kind of, who's the coordinator, all because yep. you're going to want to pay attention to what they probably have mm-hmm. to say, because organized groups generally last longer than a bunch of dudes. Yeah. So yeah and break it down to different squads, hierarchy. I guess you could say. You yeah. Know, don't, like, let's say 1.5 million people magically do go to this break this shit up into groups of 10,000 and then those mm-hmm. groups into groups of 5,000 yeah like smaller groups we've with I someone think we've just created an army by the way uh, we've, yeah. we're creating a sub military <laughs> which 1.5 million by the way is more than the entire air force has yeah i know because we only have like 300,000 enlisted yeah, it's somewhere crazy, there. wouldn't it be so 1.5 million yeah granted we probably don't have that many people, but we do have a lot of bullets. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, no matter how many people show up for this, I'm pretty sure they're going to have 10 bullets for every person that shows up. Yeah, we got a lot. Yeah. Don't uh, don't underestimate that. We are willing to throw money at a problem versus a person. Yeah. And that's what bullets and grenades and things are. We're throwing money to co- to fix something. So hydrate people. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Drink Definitely hydrate. water. Definitely. The day before, a lot of water the day before, at least, 
Don't drink monster energy drinks. Don't drink alcohol. Well, I'm I mean, sure. they kind of do have the Kyles who are going to Yeah, the Kyles be, are going to be drinking the monster energy drinks. If you drink drinks. it, like, right there before to give you that boost, fine. You're fine. That's fine. But, yeah. like, that entire, like, week beforehand. Don't. You're going to want to drink, like, a quart of water a day yeah. at least. Probably more. Hydrate, um, hydrate, hydrate. Get, get a small, bring a small backpack with you. And yeah. And have some, some. We should go over, like, a gear and what you would yeah. bring in a bag. So there are going to be people who are going to be in a hotel. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. You know, bring the suitcase with, yeah. you know, your stuff. Okay, fine. Um, will you need to bring anything the day of? I mean, probably just, you know, a bottle of water is fine. Um, I'm not condoning to litter. Yeah. So don't I would litter. say don't bring, I mean, don't just bring a bunch of, you know, bottles of water and just leave them somewhere. But bring at least a bottle of water, maybe, you know, or fill up a bottle, like a shake bo- shaker bottle or something mm-hmm. like that, just to have on hand. And uh, that should be enough for you. You really don't need a lot for this type of event. Well, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to expand on this a little bit. Bring a small backpack, at least two bottles of water. Probably bring snacks, something to snack on, and a first aid kit. And know how to use a first aid kit. And if yeah. you do get bit by a snake or stung by a scorpion, do not suck the venom out. Yeah, don't suck that. That's not helping anybody because it's already in the bloodstream, and you're yeah. not going to help. You're going to just infect two people if that, if you do actually yeah. follow through with that. So. Um, I would say there now we do actually have training in you know types of self aid body care type stuff. However, that's a lot to go into. But mm-hmm. yeah, elevates um, try to prevent blood circulation to that area if you yep. can. Um, yeah, like I said, definitely get a first aid kit. I always have mine in my trunk, my uh, mm-hmm. personal IFAC and dual first aid kit, and no, definitely know what's in it because there's. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they were just a bandage and like a uh, you know some scissors and bandages. There's so no, much there's more. So much in there. Yeah. And there is actually some like electrolyte tablets and things, mm-hmm. like, and there's going to be like blood clot stuff. Blood mm-hmm. clot um, is actually blood clotting. Well, stuff. no, it like it's it can either come in a couple different forms, the blood clot type thing, but mm-hmm. it is actually called blood clot. That's what it like is labeled as. Um, we either have a powder, which we don't really use the powder anymore. The powder you basically just take it and you shake it into the wound area, and it will just clot the blood like right there. But it also kind of infects the area and it causes some rob- other problems down the road. But it'll still save your life. Mm-hmm. We also what we do generally use now is basically a blood clot bandage. Which is a bandage that you just take it. It's really long. You just shove it in the wound. Mm-hmm. You just put putting it as like as much of it in the wound. Yeah. Like it could be like six feet long, and it could be like rolled up to the size of a softball. But you probably just put most of that in somebody's leg mm-hmm. to help clot the blood, and that's what it's meant to do. It's yeah. to stop the blood. So yeah, know things like that, and like know how to use your IFAC kit, and yeah, definitely yeah. bring like some uh, some beef jerky, things yeah. like that. Something to replace the energy because you're going to need the energy for whatever it is you do out there. Hydrate. Yeah. Good things. That, that's the most important thing right there. Hydrate. Protect yeah. yourself from the Absolutely. sun. You know, we, we don't. If you've got any medication, bring it with you or at least know what you need. Mm-hmm. Like have it on hand. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Or like have enough because if you do, you know, get captured or whatever and you have mm-hmm. to be in a location for an amount of time, have enough to get through at least, you know, two a days. A week. Yeah. I, I would say a week. Treat it like a hurricane. I, I usually do for, uh, forty-eight to seventy-two hours, depending mm-hmm. on the events. But See, yeah, I'm that's that's going to be kind of up to you and what you it. have to uh, what you have to use. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you kind of want to make yourself a bug out bag, but the thing is, is you're not really bugging out. You're, you're just kind of you're just kind of and have enough to get yourself home. Yeah, prepare yourself. You're, you're getting home. That's, what, that's mainly what we're saying. Prepare yourself. Don't just yeah. like, hey, I'm going to go run into Area 51. I wear flip flops a lot. If I yeah. were to do this shit, I am not going there with flip flops no, on. Flip flops. That's. I mean, if you want a good luck, uh, you're not going to have flip flops on your feet for very much longer. You're going to be mm-hmm. barefoot. Yeah. And yeah, no. Yeah, you see, I, I wear t-shirts, basketball shorts, and flip flops all the time. You would just go out to, like, a piece of land and just walk around with some things and see how it feels. Like, yeah. obviously, barefoot, you're going to have burrs. You're going to have, you know, things crying. It's going to be uncomfortable for you. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, don't mm-hmm. wear that. You know, go do a trial run of what you expect it could be. Yep. You know, find yourself some nice empty space and do that. Uh, if you are, Now, obviously, those are hotel options if you are going to be camping. Hopefully, you know how to camp. Hopefully you have some sort of experience. Mm-hmm. I know there's going to be a lot of campgrounds out there. You may be like an RV or things like that. 
a lot of this is probably going to be very similar, but um, yeah, try not to bring too much as far as waste products. Like we don't want to have litter because guess who's going to be cleaning it up? Yeah, it's going to be sucks. people. Don't gonna, do that shit. Yeah, don't do that. So <clears throat> even if you don't you need to poop on the side of the road or some shit like that, yeah, like bring something to dissolve that or yeah. you know help clean it up and take care of the environments because that's not the point. You're not trying to ruin yeah, you, everything. You want to leave the environment the same way you came in. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But so bring camping gear if you know how to do that kind of shit and do good luck with that. And if you see someone struggling, mm. see how you can help them. Yeah. This is going to be a big teamwork type of a exercise. I mm -hmm. think, like we said earlier, get a, you know, get a organized leader, or, you know, a squad together and kind of like how we teach ourselves. Like, Hey, do you trust the guy next to you to help save your life? Kind of thing. You gotta, you know, build some, there may be yeah. team building exercises that may be required for some of this type of stuff. Yeah, maybe that's maybe. a thing. There's a few team building exercises out there to yeah. trust so, walls. Mm, well, you know, it's going to be like, trust. Can you take a bullet for me? Fall. Yeah. But you know, yep. Yep. Even yep. just learning who the person next to you is definitely a, yeah. you know, talk to people. I know we're all social. Well, I know people are socially awkward, but guess what? So it's probably the person next to you. Yeah, so it's yeah. not, not a problem to go up and be like, Hey, what you reading? How you doing? Yeah. I mean, not like that. That's obviously just me being That sounds goofy. creepy as shit. I told you. I'm a professional creeper. It's what I do. I can tell. Yeah? Okay. I can tell. Mm. I like it. But yeah, get to know people. Have some fun. Don't yeah. get hurt. Hydrate. Carry ID on you. Uh, Probably a good idea. Yeah. I would say carry ID on you. I mean, have, have, yeah, have a... Ooh, that's actually probably a good thing. Have something that you could put... Like, put your stuff in, like, a waters tight container, probably. Mm -hmm. Like, keep that in your and backpack. Not just a Ziploc bag. Get something good. Yeah, like, something that... Durable. Like, it floats kind of thing, too, mm -hmm. if you if it absolutely has to. But something you... Just in case. I mean, not necessarily just water getting in there, but you want to make sure the dirt and things don't clog. I mean... Exactly. I mean, my phone has cracks in it. I got a piece of tape over it right now. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to the desert, I'm probably going to want to put something a little bit more durable yeah. on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keep it protected. And even your... Like your wallet, your all that stuff, it can get worn out. Yep, mm. you don't want that shit to happen. But nope. stay safe, guys. I mean, hopefully, yeah. hopefully, like something good comes out of this. Hopefully, the government's like, hey, you know, maybe we should tell people what we know, if there is anything, and would, we can stop stupid shit like this. It would be pretty nice to have a world where where we threaten to do something, and then someone's like, no, let's let's not go through with the manslaughter and actually, you know, like, hey, we, yeah. we can work together here. But yeah, it'd be pretty. It'd be pretty awesome if you guys did find something. Obviously, that mm -hmm. would be pretty nice. Uh, will it get downplayed? Probably by the government in certain media's. Maybe I don't know. Then again, our media kind of hates our government right now, so we'll yeah. see how that works. But uh, <clears throat> the military is a little bit different on that kind of stuff. And we yeah, we never know what's going to happen. You know, hopefully yeah. something good. Hopefully something bad doesn't happen. And if so. you do meet some aliens, obviously get his name and his numbers so we yeah. can go hang out sometime. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Hey, yep, yeah, this is Aaron with uh, Paranormal Gumbo. Once more, we're going to thank Tech Sergeant for coming in and talking with us. Hopefully, later on down the road, he'll come back and we'll talk some more. Maybe, maybe. So. Or you'll have to come visit me wherever it is I am, and you'll have to hmm. see something. Right, Patterson Air Force Base, right? Yeah, no. Yeah. I can't tell you where I'm at. Damn it. We'll yes. figure it out. All right, y'all have a good one, guys. <laughs> So that's all the interview with Grip Centers, mm -hmm. and uh, it was three star general, by the way. Now, yeah, he that man moves up, don't he? He's he's advancing. Yeah. yeah, and he's he's even had titles that they don't usually have in the Air Force. Yeah, they yeah. yeah. So, or, but they're amazing. just like, hey, you can have them. Here you go, buddy. Amazing. Hmm. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully the people that have listened to this have taken something from it. They're going to listen to some of the advice we've given them on the actual raid. Um, also, about Wright Patterson, I don't know. I keep bringing up Wright Patterson Air Force Base, but it's it's weird to me that this is where Project Blue Book started. Started in 1951, I believe. Ended in December of 1969 after we went to the moon. So they they've had to have found something. They they had to have discovered something, and was like, oh, okay, well, we need to throw you know. We need to get some misdirection out here. We can't say, hey, we're investigating UFOs. We need to say, hey, there's nothing out there. That's the, that's my opinion on it. The timing's a little suspicious. And, you know, there is the, the theory out there that 
when they went to the moon that there were actually um, construction there were there were buildings yeah. on the moon and that they specifically I think I, I, I can't remember exactly how it goes but they told they told them you know turn left or turn right you mm. know all of a sudden or something at some point really? it was because they were trying to avoid taking pictures of those buildings yeah. Just a theory I've well, heard here's, out there. Here's, here's something else. I mean, everyone's always talking about the lost city of Atlantis being somewhere in the ocean. Well, here's the thing. Maybe what if the lost city of Atlantis is on the moon? Wow. Because they were supposed to be very technologically advanced. Why wouldn't they be able to go to the moon and come back? I don't know. Maybe they did. We never know. Yeah, and that's why we've never been able to find it. You Maybe it's know. on the moon. Aaron's throwing some stuff nah, out there hey, anyway. Hey, people could make conspiracy theories about stupid shit all the time. Like, I heard one the other day that the moon isn't real. It's just in a, a hologram. I've not heard that one. Now, I have heard that the moon is man-made hmm. and that it's yeah, just it's hollow. hollow and yeah. full of computers and that the aliens actually monitor us from the moon. This is like some uh, Truman Show bullshit right there. Maybe, maybe Atlantis is on the moon. I don't know. That's, that's my new... It's a little far-fetched, but it's pos as possible theory. as anything else. Yeah, I mean, uh, did I you hear this one? I guarantee you, if you search it, you'll find somebody who said it before. Probably. Did you hear this one, though? I, I love this one also, that the moon isn't very big. It's just a tiny moon, and it's always following you. That's why you always see the moon. That is yeah. the dumbest thing I've I ever know. heard. I know. That's like the Flat Earth Society. Oh, my goodness. You know, that's the dumbest shit in the world right there. But, hey, it's gained traction enough that it's got freaking people like celebrities that are like, well, I'm dumb enough to believe this shit. Let's just call it like it is. Celebrities are not known for being very intelligent yeah. generally. There are exceptions, if, if you but are most getting, of them. If you are getting all of your... Scientific research from celebrities, you are a freaking idiot. There is idiot. a problem. Yes. I like it like when, um, what is that movie? I think it was, it might have been So I Married an Axe Murder, mm -hmm. where um, you've got Mike Myers' character. He goes he goes to his house and his mom is like let's look at the oh, paper the weekly world news yeah. yeah which was that yes that was so that American that was? Murder. and yeah that's what it yeah, reminds it's like, me of it's like look the, what's the in kid. the paper like, look at it look at <laughs> the uh, wee big head of his looks like Sputnik with oh hair. that was funny looks like an orange on a toothpick yeah, I freaking <laughs> loved it I love that movie I haven't seen it in years that is old damn. that definitely dates us yes. but <laughs> I, lo I love when they're doing the um you know, what would be worse? And his is like, you know, what would be worse? You know, you, you eat a... Or how, how is this for bad or some shit? It's some stupid game they're playing. It's like, how awful is this? You know, you eat like three bran muffins and two cups of coffee and get stuck in traffic. Oh, God. And then like, you know, his friend's date is like, you know, well, how bad is this? You get struck by lightning. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, what? It's a real thing. <laughs> And everyone at the table is just like, the fuck are you, what? <laughs> That's a funny movie. Oh, it's my weird, God. I'm going to have to funny. watch it shit now. It's one of those that you watch and you're like, you know, because it's got like some of the silly jazz stuff in it and all yeah. that. And you're like, what the heck is yeah, this? Yeah, the, the and, jazz but it's poetry. it's actually funny. Yeah. yeah. It's a fantastic movie. Yep. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> I've forgotten all about so, that. Yeah. So that's basically the show today. We really uh, we need to go ahead and wrap it up. But uh, listen to us next week. We're going to talk about Bob Lazar and Wright Patterson, Wright Patterson Air We're Force We're going to talk Base. about Project Blue Book. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about other alien conspiracy theories. We're gonna we're gonna be hopefully getting some feedback from you guys on what you think may be happening. We'll we'll read your stuff on the air. I mean. Let us know what you guys think. I mean, yeah. we want to know what you guys think. What do you, what do you want us to cover next? We, we've got a, a general idea of what we want to cover, but, I mean, if we get enough feedback saying, hey, do this, 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 we're going we're gonna to listen to our fans because we're doing this for you guys. Right, definitely. And, uh, you know... Just, just you can go to our website, uh, www.paranormalgumbo.com, and uh, you can fill out a contact us form, or you can just email us at paranormalgumbo at gmail.com. Either way, 
But we would love to hear from you, and we actually have gotten some feedback. Mm -hmm. Some of our listeners uh, in England want us to do some research on things in Wales. So not W-H-A-L-E-S. Yeah, things in the the country. (laughs) Yes. So, you know, uh, uh, some Welsh mysteries or, you know, haunted houses or whatever. So uh, we'll be doing that sometime in the the future for sure not something that i'd really thought about but you know uh, that a lot of times whales gets overlooked so yeah Yeah, hey we can do that that's going to be the end of the area 51 podcast a two-parter with you know lance corporal grip centers he may be losing some rank right now but he's still a good guy um we'd like to thank magnarb gaming and uh, never ready gamers uh, for helping us out. And we also want to thank Jerry Polly and Hillbilly Horror Stories. Love those guys. Yeah, they're an awesome podcast. If you've not checked them out, go ahead and check them out because they are really good. And they've been kind enough to actually help us and give us some Take advice. Take a busy schedule of theirs. Yeah, they're really busy, really busy. They make a lot of personal appearances and mm-hmm. uh, they do, they just, they, they have a lot of things going. Plus, they both have real jobs jobs as mm-hmm. well but uh check them out and uh like i said we want to thank them because they've done so much to give us advice and and help us get started so thank you guys we, we've got paypal up right now i mean if people like with people like what they're listening to if people like what they're listening to they can go ahead and uh, donate to our paypal uh that way we can do a little bit more research on some things uh travel right. some of the areas that we uh we need to to try to uh to get some of the the content out there but hey uh donate don't donate just listen like us and tell us what you think yeah and one thing too if you could go to itunes and rate us on itunes Mm -hmm. we've really not had a whole lot of ratings you know on itunes either way but the more ratings the better so if you can do that please go rate us on itunes and we're also working on a patreon Mm -hmm. uh, program so that we can get more more cool stuff to you guys and we're also working on getting more more merchandise in our yes. shop, so yes. that'll be coming soon as well. So shirts, hats, gumbo bowls. I don't know if we're going to be doing spoons or not, but beer cozies maybe. Yeah. Or drink cozies. Yep. Lots of good stuff. So uh, check, and we actually do have some shirts that you can purchase now if you go to the site. So, but we don't have all the other stuff up that we want to get. So check us out, www.paranormalgumbo.com. Yep. Thanks for listening. Don't burn the roux. Don't burn the roux.